Hello, St. Luke, St. Luke members, St. Luke family, our well-wishers, our visitors. It's uh, Word and Worship time here at the St. Luke Church. Gosh, it's December already. We marched to December. Here we are, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. Nine months. Boy, it's going to be a year. Miss you guys. You know, I see some of you periodically. And um, we thank God for being able to stay in contact through this particular um, vehicle, this virtual world. Prayerfully, you're being um, contacted by family group members. If you're family group leaders and you're not contacting your people, you're letting, um, you're certainly letting me down. I'm, I'll be very disappointed when I call people and no one have, they've heard from no one. You know, that's that's not what we are about. That's not what we're supposed to be about as family. I want you to um, contact and during this little off season, I'll get the roster and just start calling people in a little while to seeing somebody say Merry Christmas or something to you. You should have heard from someone in this nine months. And if you haven't, I am, I, I'm sorry. I apologize because, um, uh, I haven't done it expecting someone else to have done it. And that's what we had. That's how we're united as family that way. And so I pray that our family group leaders, our tribal leaders, um, and others who are over ministries, reaching out to those who are within your ministry. Well, it's us as we know that Sister Charlotte turning us out, but someone within that ministry should be reaching out to uh, the ushers and uh, whatever the ministry is, Mommy Matters, whoever, and they're doing well. The women's department, I know, are meeting well. Uh, the brothers are getting uh, group texts, and I'm not sure that include all the brothers, but I hope that we are uh, reaching on behalf of the Lord, but especially for pastoring. That's how you assist me in getting this job done. But welcome to Word and Worship. Welcome to Word and Worship, and we miss you dearly. Um, all of you, but my, you know, it's been the uh, grand pastor for all the grandbabies. You know, I miss those grandbabies. And so uh, we thank God for you and uh, stay safe and don't panic in this pandemic. It's time for prayer. This we call it Bible study evening. We've changed to word and worship during this period for a reason. We're just going to have a little talk this evening about this idea of crowding Christ out. And we're going to leave you alone, but I do want to pray in this period because I realize that it is um, a particularly challenging for all of us uh, not to be able to do the things we once did or we're accustomed to doing for this season and visiting and, and, and the shopping that people do and the gathering that's going to come about. But it's all for your own good that you take care and uh, be mindful of this deadly environment that we are that we are in we can respect and rejoice we can remember uh to glorify christ in this period though we don't have to crowd christ out and so um there are a lot of prayer uh, people who are, who are suffering uh, from illness hospitals are at max i'm being told there's some makeshift hospitals and morgues uh, being put in place uh, in one of the states I heard about earlier today. We are blessed here in Madison County not to have that as a problem. And I don't think that's a problem in the state of Alabama. That's something to be thankful for while we pray for those who are struggling with those difficulties. So I want you to gather the family. And I told you on the onset of this, this is an opportunity for us to begin um Redoing something that was a cut was customary at in the earlier day for families, and that was that we worshipped at home in our own way. We studied Sunday school at home. We uh, talked about the Word of God at home. We said Bible verses prior to sitting down, or as we sat at the kitchen table and ate, we said Bibles. I said prayer. Uh, we call it grace and Bible study. We um, had to practice our uh, Christmas pieces. Uh, that we were we had to participate in the understanding of the meaning of Christmas as children. And the Word of God actually was instilled in us in so many ways, even in school in those days. We would go to school, sing the, the song of that particular time period, whether it was Christmas, Thanksgiving, whatever. 
and uh, we would uh, say a Bible verse and recognize uh, the country through the Pledge of Allegiance. So as children, as young people, uh, we were taught in the culture to respect uh, respect God. And um, it may be that that's the reason why a lot of young people, we ask what's wrong with, with our young people, that nobody teaching them about about God. And not really. That's why there are so many weird views of God. I, I just don't understand how uh, people think that they can live a life of just tragic sin and sometimes healed by their own, because of their own bad, ungodly behavior, then come to a funeral with a group of folks saying that God called these people home. It's anti-biblical. It's anti-Christian teaching. But I understand how they don't understand because no one from a child of Jesus, the word says in the Old Testament, the word says, bend the sapling or shape the person, shape the human, shape the being, shape the soul, the way it should go while it's young. It's using the parable uh, of a tree. Bend it while it's tender. Shape it in the direction it should go while it's tender. Um, yeah, been the sapling while it's young, and when it go old, it's already been in that direction, if you will, you know. And so, one of the problems I I I I believe in our culture today is that you know, guardians, mommy, daddy, mama, daddy, them, no excuse, whoever is bringing the child up and call themselves Christians. And, and want to set the pattern of bending that child toward the ways of Christ. You know, if we uh, find out at the end that we were wrong about Christ, a Christian way is still, a Christian life is still the best way to lead them. Amen. If someone came to me and thought they had proof that Christ wasn't real, I'd still live like that. And that's because of what I was taught as it relates to like this, I, I, that's just it. Let me let me move on. At least I hold you too long. God bless you tonight for your patience with me. Gather around the altar. We're going to pray uh, for you and for uh, those around the country and around the world who are struggling. We thank God, don't we? It's, it's, it's trouble in my way, but we thank God anyhow. Some of us are crying, but we say thank you, Lord, anyway. We we thank we we thank God. We thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. God our Father, we thank you. We give you glory. Father, we give you honor and praise, God. Just another day that you've made, Father. And we want to say thank you. We ask, God, that you have your way as we enter your presence in the very name of Jesus, Father. And we ask you to enter every home right now under the sound of my voice, oh God. I ask you to touch, heal, and deliver. God, I, I ask you to be the peace. In, in, in the personal spaces right now, in personal places right now. God, I ask you to let your spirit be felt right now in the homes of the listener. God, in the name of Jesus, where there's sickness, God, I pray you be a doctor. Where there's shortage, I pray you provide the resources needed in the name of Jesus, God. I, I pray, God, for peace in every home, prosperity. And God, in the name of Jesus, as only you can, God. We, we know you're a God that, that are, are endless in your love, endless in your mercy, God. We know that you care for us, God. So I pray for your spirit right now to enter that home that has strife and, and division and, and, and confusion in the name of Jesus, God. I, I pray that your peace enter that home right now in, in, in Jesus' name. Let your peace settle there in the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus, where there's sickness, let your healing power settle there. In the name of Jesus, be the doctor in that sick room. We know you never lost a patient, oh God. Just touch, heal, and deliver 
in, in Jesus' name, God. And it's coming up to the season of, of us sitting aside this time to uh, recognize uh, the birth of Jesus, your only son who you gave for us, oh God. Some of us say thank you because this year uh, uh, we don't, we won't be so busy because we can't. We can focus upon the true reason, oh God, for the season. God, we just say thank you, God. We ask you to bless those who've been touched by this terrible virus, those who've been hurt, those who are sick, and those who have lost, God. I know you're able to hold them in the very hollow of your hand. Do that, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We pray for St. Luke, our St. Luke friends, St. Luke family, St. Luke guests right now, God. Just whatever the needs are, God, be uh, the provider. What, whatever the confusion uh, is, God, I pray for peace in the midst of them. Whatever the anxiety is, God, I pray that you will whisper through the Spirit, let not your heart be troubled. God, we say thank you, God. We, we say thank you. We say thank you, God, and wherever we can lend a heaven hand, God, we ask you to show that to us in Jesus' name. We ask you to bless those who have, uh, have, have given um, financially, bless those who went out shopping for those who are less fortunate. God, I pray that you, your blessings, will, your windows of the storehouse will open and you will bestow unto them in many folds that they're not able to receive that in Jesus' name. We say thank you now. We, we pray for those who are homeless, that there will be help for them, God. We just ask you, God, that we are, will appreciate being in shelter, being in warm places of our own, realizing that someone is under a bridge, somebody else is in woods, somebody else is in tents, right in the city. In tent cities, God. Someone else doesn't have enough food, God. Someone else struggling with mortgage and and bills, God. We just, God, we just say now, help us, oh God. We're willing to help. It's the only we know. God, we say thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. I want to talk just for a moment. I can't hold you too long this evening, but this is thing, something I talk about almost every year during this period. May should talk about it more. And I probably should stop complaining about some of the stuff I'm talking about and just start doing it myself with the moments I have uh, with us. That's this passage in Luke chapter 2. That I want to read some of it, and we're just going to talk about it for a moment tonight during um, Word. Thank you, God. It's the second chapter of the gospel as written uh, by St. Luke. Uh, in the King James rendering of that gospel, uh, Luke chapter 2, um, Luke chapter 2, if you will, get your Bibles, your phone, whatever your devices are, and Luke chapter 2, I'm going to try to get it in a couple of places here, uh, don't know whether I can or not, I was going to try to get it in a couple of places, I was looking for it there, and now I'm looking for it over here, and I don't think I have it in there, so that's okay, Luke chapter 2. In the King James, a version of the Bible, Luke chapter 2, King James, version of the Bible, Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 2, okay, there it is, Luke chapter 2, I'm going to begin reading, you can read it all, uh, the chapter, going to a, chapter 1 and 2 of Luke, to give you the genealogy again of Jesus. And if you take that genealogy and the, the, the genealogy, the family tree, he begat, they begat, they begat, and you compare that to Matthew, you'll find differences in those differences between Matthew and Luke's family tree of Jesus is that one is the um, genealogy of family tree of Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the... Um, and then Joseph, her husband, who um, wasn't the father of Jesus, but the husband, and raised Jesus as his own. You know that story, the virgin birth. So if you put those two family trees side by side and read them off, you will have um, differences, of course, because one of the families 
of Mary and others of family of Matthew. And we believe, I think, Matthew's family tree is the family tree of Joseph. And Mary's family tree is the family tree in Luke. So that's, 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 I think, the way it goes. It's one or the other, but I think that's the way it goes. I'm trying to remember that from the top of my head. I wasn't even sitting talking about that. But what you have there is either way you go, Jesus become heir to the throne of David through either family tree goes back uh, to David, one through Judah and one through uh, Nisham, I believe it's another, one through Judah, or we believe that one through Judah is that of Mary. And so those two family trees uh, you will see, you will see there. Matthew is Mary. Luke is Joseph. Anyway, I'll figure that one out. But the second verse of the second chapter is where I want to... Oh, it's the seventh verse of the second chapter. It's where I want to begin reading. The seventh verse. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn, manger being a feeding trough, we believe a stone feeding trough. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were very much so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And certainly there were with the angel of multitudes of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, and goodwill toward men. When I talk about this text, normally I use or have used over the years two uh, subjects which support the same idea. One is make room for Jesus and the other is when Christ is crowded out. Christ is crowded out. And I just want to talk about uh, that today. That same idea. The idea of crowding Christ out. It's, it's crowding Christ out. It's crowding, crowding a relationship with Christ, a relationship with Jesus, Christ the Messiah, the anointed Savior. What's crowding him, him out? When you look at the story of the birth of Jesus, you could probably say crowding Christ out is the story of his life. For he comes to his world and they receive him not. He came to his own. They rebelled against him. And I want to say something here that it, it's not the non-believer. It, it, it's, it's, it's not 
called worldly folk who give the Christ a black eye, if you will, or make Christianity look bad, or make people um, uh, unsure, make people not want to be a part, make people not want to glorify God, make people not want to believe God in God. It, it's not the world. It's, it's not that. It's not that. It's his own. Those who claim him to be uh, on his side, to be with him, for him, to be following him. It's, 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 it's those who give the Christ a bad name. Mean, evil, and low-down people who, cons who are concerned with more will 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 materialism than than people in the pure it, pure it's 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 crowding Christ out is an age old thing. It's the story of his life. If you think about it, if you look in this lesson, you find that there was no room for him in the end, and that suggests that that they didn't have room for him. That suggests that they were already crowded, but and that's one one thing. That's one thing. Already crowded, and then crowding them out. Already crowded. Those people are too. Those are the ones who never uh, had Christ, never known Christ, never received Christ, and that don't mean they don't believe in Christ. It's just never took time to participate with the program of Christ. You know, they're just too busy. You know. And that don't mean they're non-believers altogether. It's just they don't have time for it. They haven't found a place that fits them. You know, that, well, I've been to you met them. I've been to churches a few. Yeah, I believe I've been to churches a few times. But you know, I, you know, I don't know why they go through all that. And you know, and then there are others who have made a decision now in this century, in this last few years, that way. Hey, we don't have to go to church. Um, at all. We don't have to, you know, the church is in this. I don't have to be a part of anything. Uh, you know, I, I can just, you know, I can I can do it just watching it on TV. I believe, you know, that's, that's you don't have to do all that. Reverend, prove to me you, you don't have to do all that. You, you don't have to, you don't have to assemble. You don't have to assemble. Uh, that group, not the group I'm talking about. I'm talking about people who uh, claim to be uh, the people, the, the, the children, the Christians, the followers of Jesus Christ who don't have room for Jesus Christ in on their agenda anywhere, anywhere on their schedule. We were doing well when we could get together for two hours on Sunday. A lot of folk who have Christ crowded out did show up for that. I mean, but that was the only place. And maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, 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 maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But, but in this text, that's the story of the life of Christ. He came to this world that had no room for him. But to, 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 to say there's no room for Christ is to say that there is no room for the supreme and superior example of love. That's maybe why people are so selfish and mean right now. That may be why folk can't even get along in their own 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 house because because there's no room for Christ. Because if you're living in, in, in the direction of Christ, you're loving even your enemies. I know you are treating your spouse right. Well, let me move on. If there's no room for Christ, then there's no room for mercy. Mercy is when I messed up and 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 and, and should be convicted and punished, but uh, I'm given another chance. That if there's no room for Christ, then there's no room for forgiveness. And maybe that's why there's so many grudges fought out on you. Facebook and your Instagrams and all those things is just trying to get people back sarcastically and, 
in 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 in, 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 in these kinds of, of these kinds of ways. There's because there's no room for Christ. He's crowded out. Let me talk about the pandemic. Now, I thought maybe, well, the pandemic is going to stop people from being in the malls and just going everywhere. But, you know, Amazon took care of that. And so they, they, people still shop and they're just not out uh, doing it. The crowd and cries out is a dangerous thing. Let's look at this text. It says, uh, for, this is for believers, those of us who believe the Bible. I was thinking about that the other night, too. I've, I've encountered people of late adults who are struggling with the reality of God in the midst of a pandemic that's killed over 300,000 now in this country alone and some of the things they're seeing um, and the evil and the hurt. It, it wasn't just this. It had started before and people who are, are saying um, things like, if there was a all loving God, all true God, all powerful God, He would fix this. They're saying because if I was God, I would fix that's the way I think. But your ways are not are not His ways. These are these are these are adults now who don't believe in the Judeo Christian uh, God, which goes further to say they don't believe the Bible is the Word of God. See, those of us who are Christians. Not only believe that there's a God, but we believe that the word is the word of God. Packed in culture as it may be, the word of God is in there. Amen. Wrapped up in cultural constructs that are difficult for us to understand sometimes, but the word of God is in there. Amen. We believe that the Bible is the word of God wrapped up in culture, helping us to understand God's interaction and relationship with man that God made with his own hand. It's not unusual uh, to have no room uh, for God. Adam had none after he sinned. He was trying to move away from God. And crowd and cries out is a dangerous, it's a dangerous thing for Christians because history and time and the way life which is the picture throws at us. And life, which is the catcher, catches us. See, life, life is the picture and the catcher. And we just are swinging in the bed. Sometimes it's a hit, sometimes it's a myth. So life tells us or uh, shows us, or we should know as children who claim to know God, that we're going to need him. And, and we're going to need him, most of us, because we have needed him before and in fact need him now. Hmm? Somebody talk to me right there. I need the Lord on this journey because I cannot make this journey by myself. But is he crowded out? Do you make a little time for him on a daily basis? If you don't do anything else, wake up in the morning, lay it up in your bed with your eyes Oh man, I'm trying to move yet. The cracks in the knees and stuff may have them. But if you just wake up in the morning, if you're not going to get down on your knees and pray, thank you, God, for another day. Guide us this day, oh God. Lead us in the way that we you would have us to go. and Lead us in a way, God, that we can glorify you. If that's all you do, do something. Because there is an enemy who has an itinerary who schedules your hell all day. Even when you're at your own house. Somebody said amen. I felt it in the spirit room, right? That somebody said amen. 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 I'm, I'm trying to do my job on the uh, on the virtual world, but I got to homeschool and I got to cook and I got to hear about the problems. Yeah, yeah. The, got something. The devil got something to schedule your day. So you ought to call on the Lord to check in on and see what he has for you. It's dangerous to crowd cry out. I'm talking to believers now. We, 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 we crowd him. We crowd him. And even in the video world, I'm going to stop complaining about the video world. You all tell your young people, at least uh, if you're going to do anything, you're going to keep your face in it all the time. Here's a 
or YouTube or here's or whatever site I need you to go to. I want you to look at that with me. We're going to talk about it later on today. Here's one. Here's to do this. You know. Because as I, as I think about it, we were blessed to have not deep theologians as younger folk, but we had real Christian. We have deep theologians. They didn't have all these cliche things that sound so pretty with all the different, you know, letters, the iteration. They didn't do, they didn't do all that. They, they, they didn't have all the deep ability to read and, 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 and dialogue and discuss. Now, but they lived what they knew. Pretty basic. They live what they, they, you know, treat everybody right, L love folk, help folk. They, the, the basic stuff they knew, and they knew they were doing it on the basis of who God is and who God had been, and the fact that they are claiming to have God in their life. See, God in your life now, Christ in your life now, has to mean you have so much money, so much favor, so much of the good things. But this is, this is not old either. This is this is this is not so so new either. It's old. It's old. People believe in that because of what they have, they're close to God, and what they have become to God. Because they crowd Christ out. Hmm? One of the strongest things we can do now. I believe that we can return to something that we should have realized uh, was good. You know, everything in the old wasn't bad. Something was good was because mm, your babies trust you when you tell them something. You get to tell them more often. Then, then, then tell them about the God that you serve. Teach them about the God that you that you serve. In, in this passage, uh, it says, Mary, she bought for her firstborn son. Uh, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes. And this is deep because swaddling clothes were bands of cloth that they wrapped the baby to keep the limb straight. There's a whole sermon right there. My mama wrapping up the child in a way to keep the child straight. And of course, that meant the physical development, but there's something deeper about that. And that, 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 that mama, that, that, wrapped up her baby, kept a protection around her children to keep them straight. She she didn't dump them off on, on someone else. She she didn't she didn't leave them with just anyone. She didn't let the um iPad ten or eleven or the or the, or the video tablet or whatever it is. She didn't let them wrap the baby up. She wrapped them up. The parents wrapped them up keep them straight but that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother sermon right there uh don't crowd cry don't crowd cries out and, and here's some things i want to to say to you that if you do your spirit will 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 starve because he is the one in the feeding trough in the manger he he's the one that feeds the spirit it's the word of God. See, the word was made flesh. And when we study and then interact in the word of God, our spirits are fed. No crowd cries out because you'll starve in the spirit. And, and don't, don't do a uh, hearsay and fast food cries either. You need to study to show yourself. Don't, 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 don't give them, don't let the devil give you excuses about the thou shalt, thou shalt, I don't understand. I don't either read it anyway. The spirit will begin to speak to you what it means at your level and at your platform. And when you go back and read it later, it'll speak something else because it, there's deep meaning in it. So, so you, you don't want to starve. Then you got to deal with he who was laid in the feeding trough who were born in Bethlehem, which is the house of bread. And that bread relates to the idea that the word is that which feeds us spiritually so we can grow spiritually and deal with the control of our flesh and handle those spiritual attacks that are often sent our way. Hmm? Help, help me here. Help me here, Holy Ghost. Let me calm down. I'm just about through. Is Christ, is Christ crowded out of your personal life if he is 
then more than likely he's crowded out of your family life. You, you cannot introduce someone to someone you don't know. You may be able to present them I want to present you. And that's the start to present you to Jesus. We're going to learn him together. I don't know him. Let's get to know him together. I know we've been going to church a long time. Let me just do this. Hmm? Is Christ crowded out of your conversation uh, between you and your boo? Do you ever talk about Jesus, the word of God, the will of God, the way of God? Do you ever pray together? Ever pray together? And there's one thing that I messed up on. And if I could go back and start all over again, would do. Because family that prays together, y'all ain't heard me say nothing, stays together. Or is Christ crowded out of your relationship? I know you're in the same choir, you're on the same ministry, and in the same, 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 same deacon board. But is Christ crowded out? The book says that when we read this text, he was born in a stable because he was laid in the manger. We are suggesting that the manger feeding trough was in the stable sometime the Greek word for manger uh, translates to stall as well but this said he was laid in the manger so he was in a stall laid in a feeding trough because it fulfills the idea of he is the bread of life let, let me move on about through I promise you I'm about through here's what I want you to notice that that God um goes to shepherds in the field. Shepherds is important here because shepherds are taking care of sheep. God's, God goes to the shepherds who are going to take care of the sheep and indicates that uh, they are blessed because the Lord has sent a Savior. And that, that's, where, that's where I think we are off track as shepherds is that we are always trying to give people uh, what the world has to offer, the favor of the world, because, you know, we want them to have a house, a car, and that's nothing wrong with that. But what's more important, if you could get them to have Jesus in their life instead of crowding them out with those things, they could have those things and more. You can have life and life more abundantly. They go to the shepherds and and the angels show up. This is wonderful. I love this part because the 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 the, the Bethlehem council and commissioners and the mayor, none, none of them are aware. Uh, none of them are concerned. They won't even let Jesus be born uh, in the little hotel. That in the end, he's born in the stable. But it doesn't matter where he's born. The angels recognize it. That's that's heavy right there. I like that. It doesn't matter where he's born because he's not born by the will of man or not born by the will of flesh. He's born by the will of God. Somebody need to hear that, uh, questioning all these stuff. You were born by the will of God. Mama may not have been there. Dad may not have been there. But you were born. Mama had to be there. But dad may not have been there. Things may not have gone right for you. But born by the will of God and the angels recognize. Thank you, God. You didn't have nothing the angels recognize. You were in this feeding trough, wrapped in swaddling clothes, a poor boy. Yeah, with a poor mama, but the, it, it, the angels recognized and showed up, singing, glory to God in the highest. He, he's in nowhere, but he ain't nobody. He's in nowhere, but he is somebody. He, he's in this bond, but he, he, he's in this feeding trough, but he's not him. He is the savior of the world. You can be somebody. Jesus is an example that you can be somebody. You just can't crowd him. You can't crowd him out. You got to put him on carriage, on board. In fact, you ought not to be the driver. You ought to be the co-driver and let him be the driver. Danger. Crowding Christ out because we crowded him out. This word 
peace on earth and goodwill toward men, it is true. True for those who haven't crowded Christ out. They, they want peace on earth, goodwill toward all men. They they wouldn't lynch anybody. They 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 they, they wouldn't wouldn't hurt folk based upon differences. They want peace on earth, and they have goodwill. Jesus does toward all men. Don't crowd Christ out. It's dangerous, especially don't crowd him out under pretense of celebrating his birth. At least during this period, take some time. Read the first couple of chapters of Matthew and Luke. Read it to your children. Read it to your family. But let's, let's look at this. Let's look at the reason for the season. It's not the birthday of Christ. We can't tell you when that was specifically. This is just a time set aside. And aside, it's a time that's been hijacked by capitalism. Let's not let capitalism have a more influence in your Christmas than does Christ. And even with family, let's not let family just, that's all it's about. Let's get together as family. No, this is about Christ. This is about Christ. Don't cry them out. We need him. We need him now like never before. Amen. We, we, we pray that you heard this word. Something was said that is helpful in it. Or maybe the Holy Spirit touched your spirit and said, hey, it's time. It's time to give your life to Christ. It's time to come back to Christ. Today is the time. It's time to do it right now. Maybe that was what the Spirit spoke to you. The way the Spirit led you. You can do that. You can join us. And all you have to do is just repeat after me. So Lord, I'm a sinner. I need a savior. I accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my dead, buried, and resurrected savior. I ask him to come into my heart, to own me as his child. Amen. If you, if you repeated that after me, oh, I welcome you to the household of faith right now, to the place where God is with us seeking to save. Go to our website, uh, stlukeccchsv.org. You'll see join us. Follow that, those instructions. Someone will contact you soon if you already are uh, previously baptized and didn't have a church home, but the Spirit spoke and said, that's your church home. That's where you're supposed to be at. You do the same thing. Just go to uh, our website, St. Luke Christian Church Hospital.org, and follow the instructions and join you. We're so glad to have you join us in the household of faith here at the St. Luke Christian Church, where God is with us, seeking to save. Now, until we meet again, I want you to stay safe. Do not panic in this pandemic. Don't let your praise be paused, and don't let your prayers be paralyzed. God is able. You be blessed.